Welcome to the course on Schneider PLC. Finally, I decided to upgrade my old videos with the new videos on Schneider PLC with the real hardware. So if you have seen my old Schneider PLC videos in my Learn PLC in a Day course, you can imagine that those were just with a simulator. But now I have a real PLC, which is M221, and I'm going to make some video tutorials on that. So we just begin today. <laughs> so this PLC is programmed using EcoStructure Machine Expert Basic, and that's the software you can download for free, and it has a simulator. So if you don't have a real PLC, you can still use a simulator to program. So you can practice PLC programming using a simulator as well. I'm going to show you everything in, in these lessons. So you can see my PLC already on the top right. That's the PLC that I have. It's uh, connected with some I.O. So I have inputs here. I have outputs here, which is uh, in the indicator. It's a tiny program inside, which is just actuating three outputs. And you can turn it off from here. So we have emergency switch, and a push button, MC, and a push button, and a toggle switch. All right, and this PLC is connected via networks, uh, via Ethernet cable to my networks. You can see it over that, a cable is there. And then you also have some IOs, which I'm going to talk about very soon. Here you can see I have a VFD drive, and this VFD drive, we are going to connect to PLC as well via Modbus. So we'll see some Modbus application. And maybe you don't see that clearly, there's an analog input as well, and there's an edge device. So there's a lot of things we are going to play around with this PLC. So let's begin with our lesson. So the first part is understanding the features of this PLC. So this PLC has many IOs and many possibilities to talk to the external world. So you can see that in PLC on top, I will show you we have nine digital inputs. So you can connect nine inputs to this PLC, digital inputs, and it has two analog inputs as well. So nine digital inputs and two analog inputs. This PLC, uh, the model number of this PLC is TM221CE16R. So that's the model number. I'm going to show you how you can use that in the software as well. So these are the inputs. And in the outputs, we have seven digital output terminals with a relay type outputs of two amperes. Okay, so these are the voltage rating that you can connect to these outputs. Uh, this PLC don't have analog outputs, but if you want to have analog outputs, you can connect an extra module next to it. I'm going to talk about that later as well. So on the top, you will see we have a battery holder with a battery. So when you buy a PLC, it comes with a battery as well, which is already inside this. And then you have some indicators here for input and output indications. You have status indicators. Status indicators will tell you what's the current status of the PLC. If it's uh, powered on, if it's in run mode, if it has error, or if the battery is gone, if SD card is working, things like that you can see on the PLC. And then you have a serial communication port. It's a RJ45 terminal, and with the serial port, you can connect to different devices via RS-232 and RS-485. So if you have an HMI or if you have some any remote terminal that you want to connect, if you have maybe a power meter uh, which is sending the signal by Modbus, you can connect to this PLC and get the readings from there. We are going to connect this terminal with our VFD and see some example of how we can control a VFD by RS-485, right? And on the bottom, you have Ethernet connector for programming and networking. So right now, if you see on my, on my PLC, I have this Ethernet port connected, and this is connected to my computer. So I'm going to use that to monitor my PLC status and also to download the program to it. In the future, I will also use this connector to connect to the H device as well. All right, so many possibilities. And then this PLC is powered by AC input. You have the range from 85 to 264 voltage. So you don't need to have a separate DC power supply. It has a DC converter inside, which converts from AC to DC. So you just need to connect your AC supply. Then you have a USB mini B programming port. Maybe you don't see it here. There's a cover. And if I maybe I can show you in my PLC, I have it here. So if I open it, there is a USB port. You can use it to program the PLC as well. So in case if you don't have Ethernet connectivity, you can also connect by USB. And on top, you will just see one switch. It's for run and stop mode selection. So you can make the PLC to run mode or stop mode wherever you like. It's possible using the hardware. And on the bottom, you also have an SD card slot. So if your memory or the programming memory is huge, you have a huge program, you can use an SD card as well. This is also used to back up the programs and you can put to another PLC to load the program as well. So a lot of things on a tiny device and just a little bit of uh, introduction to communication protocol. It supports Ethernet IP. It supports Modbus and DLCP client. All right, three communication protocols it supports. And if you want to extend its functionality, you can connect analog IO module, digital IO module, 
counter module, safety module. So there are different modules that you can attach to this PLC. So feel free to extend the possibility of this PLC by attaching the modules. You can also attach the modules in the PLC simulator. We're going to see that shortly. These are the internal memory, 512 KB RAM and 15 megabyte ROM. It has already inside. And it supports four high speed inputs, four fast input at 100 kilohertz, 32 bits. So I also have an encoder in the future regions. I'm going to show you how we can connect encoder and read on this high speed input. So a lot of things are covered in these series of videos. And first thing you need to do is download the software and then we will continue from that. Little architecture I want to show you here. So for example, this is the PLC and these are some extra modules. And in this PLC, you can connect to analog inputs. So here you can see some sensors, uh, pressure, temperature, flow, or weight, which can give zero to 10 volt signals to the PLC. You can connect rotary encoder for high speed counter channels. So you can high speed inputs, you can also read in this PLC. And from this 485 or 432 series communication, you can connect graphical display unit or HMI, things like that you can connect. And via Ethernet, you can also connect to the SCADA or some upstream uh, upstream data softwares that you use to extract information from the PLC, you can also connect. You can also connect that to an edge device as well. From the PLC output side, you can see uh, some examples how you can have a high speed output from your PLC to control some servo drive with stepper drive. The PLC that I have does not support high speed output because it's a relay type PLC, but there is a transistor type PLC as well which supports high speed output. So this is just a tiny architecture I wanted to show you. All right, now that's the wiring diagram of my PLC, which is running right now on my table. So that's the PLC. Let me show if I can show you. So that's the PLC over here. And uh, this is wired uh, with some cables and that's the wiring diagram I, that I created for you. So here, I hope you can see both of them together. Yeah, it works with. So if you're familiar with PLC wiring, this is something easy for you. But if this is for the first time you are trying to understand how to wire the PLC, I can give you a bit overview. So if you see the top side, we have digital inputs. So digital inputs are the one which gives signals to the PLC. Okay, signals could be 24 volt or zero volt digital input. So here we can see we have a syncing input type of wiring. When you have syncing input, this means the signals that you connect to the PLC supplies 24 volts. So PLC will sync that signal. Just a short way to understand. So if you see on the top side, we have two ports, 24 volt and zero volt. These are the DC output of the PLC. So if you supply to the PLC line and neutral, if you supply power to your PLC, it gives you 24 volt output. And this 24 volt output is connected to the inputs of the PLC, to the one end of the inputs. For example, you have e-stop, then you have normally open two push buttons, then normally close push button, then normally open push button and toggle push button. So whenever you press these buttons, it gives a signal to the PLC. So right now, I, I'm not sure if you can see it, we have the status on the PLC. So this e-stop is sending already a signal when it is not engaged. So my first input is already true. I'm not sure if you can see that. But if I press this e-stop here, now this input will get false. So basically inputs are just giving a signal 24 volt and zero volt to the PLC. Similarly, this is the signal which is going inside the PLC and there is a logic inside which turns on my output and this is going to reset that, all right? So digital inputs are supplying 24 volts to my PLC because the common of this digital inputs is connected to 24 volts. So when 24 volts is going inside these inputs, you can see that these inputs has a common. So this common is the common of these inputs. So to this common, we supply zero volt. So when you supply zero volt to the common and 24 volt is coming from the inputs, there is a 24 volt potential difference between the common and the input terminal, which triggers the input of the PLC, all right? So you have to maintain a 24 volt potential difference. If you connect 24 volt to the common and zero volt to the inputs, this will also work. In this case, it will be source and input, all right? So that's about a little bit about the input. And then if you come to the output, we have common and Q012, three is not connected, and you have COM1, four, five, six, which is not connected. So basically to the common, we supply 24 volts. So when you supply 24 volt to the common, and when the output is on, it supplies 24 volt outside. So it is sourcing the 24 volt to the load. The load is the lamp. 
So this 24 volt will connect to Q0 when Q0 is on in the program. And then this Q0 will travel to the, to the respective LED. And this common of this lamp is connected to 0 volt so that the lamp will be on. So here also we, we uh, maintain 24 volt potential difference to turn on the load. So we have three outputs, Q012 connected to red, yellow, and green indicators. All right, rest are not connected. And here you can see we have analog inputs. These are not actually wired right now, but this I will do the same wiring later on. In this analog input, you have a common, which is connected to zero volt. And then analog input is connected to output of a potentiometer. So if you see in my table, that's the potentiometer. I can rotate it. And with this rotation, I can send a variable resistance to the outside. That will be converted to variable voltage. And this will go to the analog input of the PLC. So analog input, I can measure using this. So we have two analog input channels, but I'm using only one. If you want to have this diagram, you can just take a screenshot. Uh, I created this diagram on Draw.io. I will also attach it as a resource in the, in the lecture, okay? That's how the VLC has been wired. Next part is what kind of programming languages you can program in this VLC. So I'm using a software which is called uh, Machine Expert. It's from EcoStruction Machine Expert basic version. And it supports programming in letter logic, instruction list, and graph set. There are more programming languages, but this VLC or the software supports these programming languages. So you are free to choose any programming language that you like. We will start working with letter diagram, and we will shortly see how instruction lists work, because once you have a letter diagram, you can convert to instruction list automatically with the software. It's a very powerful software. It's a free, free software you can download from the Schneider website. I will also put the link in one of the resource lectures. Otherwise, you can just search for that in the Schneider website. Maybe you need to sign up and then you can download the software. And then you can also program this VLC using graph set. Graph set are uh, very often used when you have to have sequential way of programming. When you have some steps in your program, then you use graph set. So we'll be using graph set as well. But we will start with letter diagram. Shortly, we will see instruction list, and then we'll move to graph set. Letter diagram, I'm sure you might be knowing it. And this is quite similar to how you also make circuits in your relays, because it has it works with contacts and coils. So it's quite similar to relay uh, logic programming. So we will, uh, we will cover these three different programming languages. And minimum system requirement for the software to run is uh, Intel, Dior, in, Intel Core 2 Dual Processor minimum one gigabyte RAM, but I'm sure nowadays most people have at least four. And then you need at least 32 or 64 bit version of the Windows 7, 8 or 10. All right, so that's the programming languages we're going to go through. Next is, I have to wait a second, maybe there I have to move my cam. Right, so these are the minimum requirements you can see now. Sorry, my camera was on top of that. Next is, we have to get familiar with the software. So software I have already installed, and once you start the software, it will look like this, okay? So I have already a program inside. I can go here and create a new project. So I will start from scratch. So this is now a new project, and once you open the program, it will look like this. So in this program, in the first, you have some properties. In the properties, you define the properties of your project, okay? I will go to these details later on. And then you have configuration. In configuration, you define which hardware you're using. You can define the IOs of this uh, hardware. For example, you have digital inputs, digital outputs, and here you can define the symbol of your IOs. It has already addressed. So here in the inputs, you have I0.0 to I0.7. So you have already inputs defined here. Then you have digital outputs defined here. Then you have analog inputs and then high-speed counters. So here you configure your IOs and you can configure your PLC as well. So if you go to the controller, you have here a serial line, you can configure the Modbus communication and you can also configure the Modbus communication. There are two here, but this model is not the one which is on my table. I have to update that later, but I'll show you that later on. So here in configuration, you configure your controller. Then comes the window programming. In programming window, you write the program. Simple and easy. So this is the letter diagram right now. And if you see here, tiny button, you can switch to instruction list as well. So whatever you write here, it will automatically convert it to instruction list. So this is the benefit of that. We will come to the elements of that in detail in the, in the next videos. And then you have a display. So if you want to connect, if your PLC has some display on it, my PLC doesn't, you can also configure that here. 
and then finding the commission. In commission, you are going to find your PLCs. You're going to download the uh, program to your PLC. You can upload the program from the PLC. You can do some backups and you can also launch your simulators. So it's a very powerful software and very neatly subdivided into different categories. Okay. This is what I actually explained in this video. You have configuration, programming, and commissioning. In configuration, you can select and assemble the hardware, define the settings. In programming, you create your programs, define the IOs. And in commissioning, you download the program or deploy the program to your PLC. So these are the different stages of project development in your PLC. All right. And let's see what is the next slide. So this, this, I will come later, the task priority. So over here, until here, I will just want to highlight again. We are going to use Schneider PLC uh, M221 controller, and the software for that is Eco Structure Machine Expert Basic. Download the software. Maybe I can show you a link. I hope this is, yeah, this is hyperlinked. So continue to external site. So this software link I will put in the somewhere in the video description. Um, there you find Eco Structure Machine Expert, and you can just download this file, and then you can just install it. All right. So this was about the basic about the Schneider PLC and what we're going to do in these series of lessons. So see you in the next video where I'm going to introduce you how the software works, what is the structure, what you have to do step by step to write a program in the software. All right. So see you in the next video. Have fun. Bye bye.